Hey guys, it's Ashley. Normally I don't have to do a little pop-in like this super early into the video, but I needed to make a little introduction to let you know a few things before this video starts. So first I want to say if you have not read the Percy Jackson series or the Heroes of Olympus that you might possibly be spoiled going into this. I did my best to try to give spoiler warnings to that or to just not spoil at all, but of course the events that happen in this book are because of the events that happened in those, so just a lot of the basic stuff that I'm talking about you wouldn't know if you hadn't read those series. And number two, this vlog is going to act similarly to my other vlogs where if you see a little book cover appear in the corner down here like so, that means that a spoiler for that particular book is coming. If you have not read the book you are more than welcome to mute, but that's up to you. You're going into a reading vlog, so you better have either read the books or prepared to be spoiled because a majority of this video is spoilers. So without further ado, let's go back to Ashley from September. Hey guys, it's Ashley and today I'm starting my Trials of Apollo reread slash reading vlog. If you haven't heard already, I am rereading the first two books in the Trials of Apollo series and then getting to finally read the third and the fourth books to prepare for the last one that's coming out in October. So today is September 7th possibly? It's Labor Day, so whatever date that is. But I started the first book in the Trials of Apollo, which is called The Hidden Oracle, and I started rereading it last night, but I decided not to start vlogging until today because I'm just rereading this, so there's really not much that I need to share with you really. If you want to hear more thoughts than what I will probably share in this vlog, I do have book talks up for the first and second books, so I'll leave those linked down below if you want to watch. I will say I filmed them a long time ago and I don't remember what I said and it probably, maybe it'll be as coherent as my videos are now, but then again, are they really that coherent now anyway? I started this book last night and I'm literally already like a third of the way through. I've just been flying through this book because I'm not really like skimming per se because I already know what happens, but I'm like taking things in like three quarters of the way. I will say though, going back into this first book and reading it again, I forgot how funny he is. Like I love him in the Percy series obviously and I reread the Percy Jackson series last year. So I definitely remember him, especially in book three when he makes his first appearance. I love that. I love that scene so much and there's like references to it in here. It's great. I forgot just how like funny it is to be reading from his perspective and I'm really excited to see him sort of like change and grow throughout the series because I feel like that's something that I never really got to see as much because I stopped at book two. Because in this first book he's like, you know, oh mortals should bow down to me, offer me burnt sacrifices, I am the eternal god of hotness and stuff like that, which is really funny. But at the same time it's like, I kind of want him to like learn and grow and become like a better person, but I also really love his humor. So it's really hard. I'm hoping that we get some of both the longer that we go in the series. So tomorrow is Sunday. It's currently Saturday right now. That means that I need to finish this book by tomorrow so that I can get a start on book two for next week if I am planning to stay on track and read the books when I said I was going to. Which basically means that I need to read the last like 75 pages that I have of this story within tonight, tomorrow, which I can definitely do considering the past day and a half I spent reading like 650 pages of a book that just I really just wanted to get through. So I can definitely do this, definitely doable. I also wanna put out there that the day that I'm filming this, Rick Riordan put a video on his Instagram announcing that the Kane Chronicles are going to be adapted as films on Netflix. And I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Like what a perfect time it was for me to read that series finally, like honestly. It's like he literally knew he was like, Ashley just finished reading the books after saying she was going to for years on end. Let's make movies. I'm like really, really, really excited for that. And I just can't believe that like out of all of the shitty things that have happened in 2020, we got news of a Percy Jackson reboot on Disney Plus and we got news of King Chronicles movies. At least something decent and good has come out of 2020. Now, if those movies and if that TV show are shit, then we will blame the year and just be done with it. But yeah, back on topic. I'm gonna see if I can finish this tonight. Oh my god. I still have a dust jacket on my book. 
Who reads like that? Just finished book one. So I forgot to mention this back earlier in the vlog when I was still in the middle of reading this, but one of my absolute favorite parts of this book. It's a really stupid moment, but it's really, really funny and it makes me die laughing every time I read it. But it's the part when Apollo and Meg first get to camp and they're eating dinner and Demeter claims Meg and <laughs> because Demeter's symbol is like a, uh, what's it called? It's like the curved blade. Um, Shoot, I can't remember what it's called. If I think of the name, I'll put it here. It's really funny though, because in that moment, like everybody's silent and then somebody shouts, somebody shouts, she's a communist. And I just die laughing. I, oh my God, I fucking die every single time. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Can't wait for book two. Okay guys, so I started the second book in the Trials of Apollo series last night and I am almost 100 pages into it. I think I'm on page 91 right now, chapter 10. Everything is slowly coming back to me and I realized that I basically forgot like 90% of what was happening in this book. I have like this weird hair sticking out here. Let's just ignore that. I'm basically at the part right now where Brito Martis, the goddess of nets, which a weird thing to be the goddess of, but okay. She just tasked Apollo and Calypso with going to retrieve her griffins, which actually was the one part that I remembered out of all of this book. Like before I started rereading this, if you had asked me what I remembered about this book, I would have told you that scene where Apollo was chucking frozen tater tots at the griffins to get them to come to him. That's the only part of this book that I remembered. This book makes me flash back to how much I love Leo and how much I want to reread The Heroes of Olympus now because I just, I really love him. And there's so much that I've totally forgotten about. Like for some reason I was reading Leo's part in this book or like Leo said something or whatnot. And it just like made me flash back to in The Heroes of Olympus where if you have not read the series, I would suggest muting until I put my hands down because this is a big spoiler. There was something that happened with Leo and Hazel and Leo's like grandfather or something like Hazel was Leo's grandfather's like lost love or something like that because Hazel was stuck in like the Lotus Casino or whatever which like seems to be a trend with children of Hades, Pluto, maybe she was stuck in the casino I honestly don't remember yeah something like that it just like made me like all of a sudden like flash back to that moment and I was like how did I forget that? So now I really want to reread that series. Anyway though, it's a fun time so far. Can't wait to keep reading and cannot wait to get to the next two books. So we'll see how long this takes me to get through. Also, if anyone wanted to know, I decided to not dog ear my pages all of a sudden. Don't know why, mostly because I had this $5 off coupon to Grimaldi's Coal Brick Oven Pizzeria sitting around and I found it and I've just been using it as a bookmark. Not sure anybody wanted to know that, but there you go. Just ignore the fact that I have on like a full face of makeup with like these old clothes on. I realized that I didn't update you guys when I finished this book, so this vlog is not going very well, first of all, but hopefully it will get better soon because these were just rereads. And now we're gonna be getting into the good stuff. Final thoughts on this book because I don't think I updated you guys on it. I still really love this book. It's just definitely not my favorite out of all of them. Like the first one I thought was definitely better than this one, though I still love this one. I absolutely love Joe and Emmy. They are adorable. And with Georgie, they just make the cutest little family and I'm obsessed with them. And then of course there's Leo and Calypso and I freaking love Leo. Like. I've said before that he's one of my favorite characters. There were a couple of pages that I tabbed in this book that I wanted to like remind myself to talk to you guys about. And um, they both have to do with the fact that this is, I think, don't quote me on this, I'm probably wrong, but this is one of the first books that talks about there being other gods within the same world, I guess. Like that there's like Egyptian gods and Maya gods and like that kind of thing. Like I said, it's probably not the only book and I'm just forgetting what other one or just kind of bypassed me, but this is the one that like it stood out to me the most. I tapped this page because Apollo just like randomly um, mentions Indra, the storm god. I'm pretty sure that that's 
Hindu mythology. So um, the fact that Apollo just kind of like randomly mentioned him here, I'm kind of thrown off by that. Like, what does that mean? And then toward the end, I also tabbed this page because Talia and Apollo actually have an actual conversation about there it being other gods existing over the same things that these gods exist over. So Talia's like, so you're the sun god, but some other deity from some other culture is also the sun god? He goes, exactly, different manifestations of the same truth. In ancient times, this was common sense. Each country, sometimes each city, has its own pantheon of gods. We Olympians have always been used to living in close proximity to, uh, the competition. He's like literally talking about there being other gods. So I don't know if that means anything. I don't, I don't know. I'm literally just theorizing here. So we'll find out because in this vlog, you'll find out. Anyways, I've talked for long enough about that book. Now it's time for me to start The Burning Maze, book three, which I'm really worried about. I'm just gonna say it right here and theorize exactly what I think is going to happen in this book. I think that they are going to go into the labyrinth because that's what they talked about in the last book. And I think that they're going to make their way to California or like Mount Diablo where all of this is supposed to happen. They're going to reconnect with the characters in Camp Jupiter. And I am 90% sure that something happens to Jason. Like 90% I'm 90 sure he either dies or he's like really mortally injured or like something happens to Jason because as much as I don't want to be spoiled and as much as I've said it that I don't want to be spoiled, y'all just come up with some comments that really leave me no other choice than to like really think, okay, so Jason's gonna die in this book. And that's like no shade to you guys. Like I really appreciate you commenting and everything. It's just really funny to me that I'm like, no spoilers and somebody's like, well, since she hasn't read book three, she's not gonna be really happy with Jason or something like that, you know? It's like, uh, it's so funny. It's so funny. I'm not one of those people who like truly cares about spoilers. Like they don't really bother me. I prefer not to be spoiled, but if I am, it's like literally not the end of the world. So if you've made one of those comments, please don't feel bad. But yeah, I just find that really funny. So I am theorizing that Jason will die and I guess we'll see what happens. I'm saying all of this with a smile on my face. Jason is like one of the main characters of the Heroes of Olympus and I'm talking about him dying and I'm just like laughing about it. Like I don't mean to. I don't mean to do that, but also like if you watch my tier ranking video, I did rate him last pick for a quest, I think, which was my average category because he was just fainting all the time in Heroes of Olympus. So he's already not my favorite character, but um, I'm sure I'll have some newfound appreciation for him when he loses his life, possibly. Just a theory. <laughs> this is turning into the weirdest fucking segment of this vlog. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm gonna go start reading this book wish me luck. So I meant to film this part of the vlog a couple days ago when I first started this book, but of course time got the better of me and I didn't do that, but I'm here now. So that's what matters. So I stopped around page, where did I stop around? It's page 107, which is chapter 12. As far as I know right now, which this is gonna be a spoiler, they've met up with Grover, they've gone through the labyrinth and they've ended up in California, which is where they were hoping that they would be. Apparently there's this like fire that keeps shooting up from the labyrinth because the third emperor who has taken hold in California, who is Caesar, or, oh, Caligula, there it is. I was trying to find it in the book. So either Caesar or apparently they're gonna call him Caligula? I don't know. I'm kind of confused as to what his name is, but that's the third emperor and apparently he's been utilizing the maze or the labyrinth against them. He's been having fire shoot up everywhere, which is what's causing the wildfires in California instead of gender reveal parties. Anyway, but they've also met up with Coach Hedge and Melly and Chuck, who is the baby. And honestly, I feel kind of bad for putting Coach Hedge in the like average category in my tier ranking of her and characters. At the time, I hadn't read anything with him in it in a really long time, and so I was like, eh, he's okay to me, but I love him so much. I, I, I really do love him. It, it, just reading about him in like that short chapter when they were in the military supply store, I think it was, when he was like grabbing all the like grenades and the, and the, uh, the bombs and things like that, and he was trying to blow everything up. It's so funny. Speaking of blowing up, wait, okay, so far my favorite haiku, we blow up some things. You thought all the things blew up? No, 
we found more things. <laughs> I freaking love that so much. But one of the other things that I really liked about this so far, even just the 100 pages that I've gotten to, were the stuff that we were learning about Meg. Because in the Dark Prophecy, it said that the daughter of Demeter goes back to her ancient roots or whatever it said. And um, basically the, the place that they're in now, whatever it's called, I can't pronounce it, but it's where her father had built the house. And so we get this like flashback that she sh somehow shows Apollo. I'm still so confused as to what the heck she can do and like who she really is. Um, her father had built this like big ass house and he was like studying things and creating like these seeds and, and said that their family had gone back for like millennia, which is like, okay. Who are you? Somebody like set fire to the house and they had to run away and that's how they ended up in New York. Also, there was a mention that um, Caesar's talking horse. I don't know how I feel about that. Blackjack? Yes, love him. Um, an actual English speaking talking horse? That's not a centaur? I don't know how I feel yet. I'm actually behind schedule. Today is Monday and I should be starting the fourth book this week because next week the fifth book comes out, the final fifth book, the last book in the Percy Jackson world. Oh my God. I'm sad, but I'm also like so excited to read it. So um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna stop now. We're gonna keep reading this book so I can catch up and get to the fourth one this week, which I think I can finish this, but whether I wanna start the fourth one right away is another question entirely based on what I, and thinking is gonna happen at the end of this book, so we'll see. Last time I talked to you, I don't think that we had met Piper again in the story. And to be quite honest, Piper is just not one of those characters that I ever truly like remember when I think about the heroes of Olympus. But reading about them in this book, honestly, has really brought me back to like all of the memories that I have reading the Heroes of Olympus, like knowing their backstories, but then completely forgetting them afterward. So yeah, coming back into this, I'm in love with Piper. I love her so much. And when we first saw Jason again in this story, I just, I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. first of all, I forgot he wore glasses. There's also a joke in here about him like always being hit on the head and fainting, which is really funny because that's literally what I talked about in my tier ranking video. But yeah, anyway, the part that I'm at now is they are on these ships. They're trying to get Caligula's shoes because apparently they can't go into the maze and get the Sybil of Eurythria, is that what it's called, without the shoes, which is weird. I really, really liked the scene where Apollo was talking to Jason and Jason was telling him like what really happened when he visited the Oracle. And Jason asked him, he said, just do me one thing, okay? Like when you become a God again, like just remember what it felt like to be a human. Like remember this humanity that you're experiencing right now. And it just like really brought the story down. Like I'm, I'm so happy that I'm finally at the part in the series where Apollo is really understanding and empathizing. <laughs> I love that so much because as much as I love Apollo as just like this big headed god, I love and appreciate him so much more having developed as a character in this series so far. Again, really scared, really, really, really scared for the ending. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Um, there's a line that I really like here and I'm gonna read it to you. <clears throat> it's been my observation, I said, that you humans are more than the sum of your history. You can choose how much of your ancestry to embrace. You can overcome the expectations of your family and your society. What you cannot do and should never do is try to be someone other than yourself. Piper McLean. I love that. I love that so much because it's just, it's just Apollo being an actual good person and not just a freaking bonehead. I love, I love it so much. I'm done with this fucking book. <laughs> oh my god. Fuck. I fucking can't. I knew it was coming and I can't. I can't believe I'm putting this on the internet. I, I was in such denial. I was like, no, this is not going to happen. This it's just not gonna happen like there's literally no way like <laughs> i take back everything that i said about jason in my tier ranking video i think he's up there in the damn fine category now and i have nothing more to say on the topic <laughs> so i'm just gonna go and like 
cry in peace and silence now. And I'll be back sometime when this is a little bit better. So I came out here thinking, oh, it'll be nice if I film outside for a segment of this vlog. And now it's windy and really bright out. So I hope that you can hear me because I can barely see what I'm filming. <laughs> What I came out here to say was that, oh, now my camera's gonna die, that's great. What I came out here to say was that I finished the burning maze last night and I wanted to update you guys on my thoughts, but I don't know how long I'm gonna have before my camera dies, so I'm just gonna keep talking until it cuts me off. I finished the book last night and I don't know what was harder to read about. The point in the book where I was sobbing in tears or when the other characters who had not been there at the time found out what had happened. Like genuinely, I do not think that I have felt so much despair in a book in a while as I have that book. Oh my god. Oh my god. But anyway, um, I wanted to say that I really loved the end of this book. The, the climax at the end was really good, I thought. Um, I really liked all of the puzzles and the, the crosswords that the Sybil had to give them because her voice kept cutting off. And I really loved how many times Apollo was willing to sacrifice himself for everybody else like I know that he kept like complaining about that and he was like making a joke like oh that's three times now you better be counting but like in all seriousness like that just goes to show like how much his character he as a person is developing in this story and I know I keep talking about that but it's genuinely one of my favorite parts and I love it because it's just so clear to see that like he's completely changing another part of the end of the book that I liked was uh, Meg and I loved uh, uh, the uh, the silver wives or what the, the, the malai. So we're rapidly losing light outside right now So I'm gonna try to make this relatively quick even though I have a lot to talk about um, Currently, it's October 4th and yes I did get cut off in the last clip because my camera died But it is charged now and I decided to wait a couple days until two days before I'm supposed to have This book done in order to get to the fifth book and you can imagine where I'm at right now. First up, let me talk some more and finish my thoughts on where I cut off from. What I was talking about at the end of that last clip, I was talking about how much I liked Meg and the Malai and how how at every single order that she gave, they were just like, yes, Meg, all hail the Meg. And it was just, it was so, so funny. Yeah, I would definitely say that The Burning Maze is probably my favorite out of the three that I've read in the series right now. I loved spending time with Grover again. I loved um, all of the dryads that we got to be around and um, learning more about Meg's past. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and start talking about this book, which is book number four, The Tyrant's Tomb, or The Tyrant's Tomb, however you wanna say it. Um, because like I said, it's October 4th and in less than two days, the fifth book is coming out. But since I waited until the last minute to start this book and now I only have less than two days to do it, guess who's going to be trying to binge this as much as she possibly can even though she has a library book that's due in the next 10 days. Yeah, that person's me. So anyway, let me go ahead and share a little bit with you here. I'm currently on page about 100. For some reason, in every one of these books, I stop right at page 100 and update you guys and then don't update you guys throughout the rest of the book, which I need to be better at, but I'm on page 100. So far, they have gotten to Camp Jupiter and realized that something has happened. So Caligula and the Emperor are on their way to Camp Jupiter to apparently attack it again because one time wasn't enough. And um, Apollo, Meg, Frank, Reyna, Hazel, literally everybody who's at Camp Jupiter right now is just trying to figure out what the hell this prophecy means and why this undead emperor king of sorts is has something to do with this. I don't really know. There's some guy named Tarquinius Superbus, which first of all, his last name is Superbus, excuse me? There are like these ghouls and creepy things that keep like attacking them and if you get scratched, you get turned into a zombie, it's really weird. So I'm not sure what's happening. I know that they have to go into the tomb and figure something out and Reyna has to close the the door. Reyna, I am remembering things that happened in the Heroes of Olympus and it's making me want to reread that series so much more because I've totally forgotten everything. And once they got to a little bit of like Frank's backstory in this book within the first hundred pages and the like, I'm just gonna say the stick so that I'm not like spoiling too much, it just like really brought back like all these memories. Also still kind of scared because apparently there's still supposed to be like death and blood and things that keep being prophesized to Apollo, so I'm like, 
how much more of this are we gonna be able to take? Um, but I haven't heard anything horrible about this book from you guys, so I'm hoping that the answer is not that much. And that's all I have to say for now. So wish me luck as I try to finish this entire book in the next day um, to prepare for book number five, everybody. This is a peace sign. I didn't mean number two. Five. Book number five. <laughs> okay, so I started reading again and I'm only like 20 pages further than I was earlier when I updated you guys, but I had to I had to put this in here because I love Tyson so much. I love him so much and we haven't seen him in such a long time. The part that I'm at right now is when they're all talking about the plan that they are going to concoct to try to save the world or whatever in this book. So they're talking about the prophecy and Ella is like reciting what they have to do and whatnot and and Tyson, Tyson, my baby, he stands up and he's like, that, that is a prophecy. I have it on my back. And he literally rips off his shirt in the middle of everyone and points at the tattoos on his back that Ella put there. And then he goes, I also have a fish pony by my kidney. Isn't it cute? I'm crying. I love him so much. Okay, I'm literally just gonna keep updating with really funny things that I keep coming across because I am crying at how fucking funny this is right now. Um, I'm on chapter 13. I'm just gonna read this straight, straight up because I'm laughing. Lavinia explains that she enjoyed sitting here because it was directly above the garden of Faunus, Reyna's favorite thinking spot. Reyna was not in the garden at present, but whenever she was, Lavinia could look down at the Praetor a hundred feet below and gloat, ha ha, my thinking spot is higher than <laughs> and as much as it might not feel like it because I'm pretty much in the same position as I was last time, this is the next day. It's actually really, really late right now, as in really early morning, and I should go to sleep right now, but I wanted to update you before I actually finish this book because I am probably, I don't really know how far I am from finishing, maybe somewhere between like 60 and 100 pages from finishing and I'm honestly getting really scared as to what's gonna happen So I don't want to put myself through that right now. So I'm gonna wait until tomorrow Tomorrow is also when the Tower of Nero is coming out So I was doing my best to try to finish this one today or tonight, but I just have like I Hmm, I have a really horrible feeling mostly my feeling stems from the fact that this chapter haiku is not again my heart how many syllables is total hopelessness. I haven't heard anything mind-numbingly horrible about this one like I had the burning maze, so yeah. I don't know. I'm holding out hope, but at the same time I'm like, I just, I just don't have faith in Rick anymore that he will not break my heart. Guys, it's Tower of Nero release day, which means one thing. I have to finish book four. So I need to finish this one before I start the fifth book, but we're gonna go out and get the fifth book because your girl didn't pre-order it. So I'm gonna run to Barnes and Noble and pick it up. Then I'm gonna come back and finish this book. We're gonna start the last book in the Percy Jackson world. It, it's too, it's too much to think about at 11 a.m. So we're just not going to think about it, okay? <laughs> Get mine in it. <laughs> you can't tell I'm smiling under my mask, but I am. Guys, we got the goods! She got a Pusheen calendar, but I got the Tower of Nero! I'm so excited. Oh my god. Already somebody on Instagram said that they bought the book last night on ebook and they spent an all nighter reading it yeah. and um, they were emotional. So. I'm kind of scared. Um, I'm gonna keep talking while she goes to show you her favorite Kushin. Um, So yeah, when I get home, I'm gonna finish the fourth book and then move right into this and tell you all of my thoughts. Here's her favorite Kushin. Okay, I hate all of you right now because nobody told me, nobody told me that something like what happened in book three was going to happen in book four. Nobody even alluded to it and I am pissed oh my god um so i just finished chapter 36 i want to say that i love that reyna is in it because i absolutely love her and i forgot 90 percent of what she did in the heroes of olympus but i am kind of weirded out by like the fact that apollo thinks that he can heal her heart which is like 
kind of weird, but that scene where he was like, you know, I can be your boyfriend if you want, maybe I can help, was so, so funny. Oh my God, I started crying laughing in my bed last night. I was like, this is not happening right now. That was hilarious. But I was also kind of like annoyed that there wasn't more that she had to do to help them, I guess. Like with like Grover and Jason and Piper and like, you know, everything that happened in the last book, even Leo and Calypso, like they literally had to help them the entire book. And like this, she just had to go on one single quest and then lend him godly strength in order to break the box open. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say was that I really love Meg and Apollo together in this book. I think that their like relationship has just gotten to a whole new level because Apollo admitted that like he loved her like a little sister and it was just so sweet. And the part where like Meg was like thinking that it was her fault that he was dying and he hugged her and it was just, ugh. It was so, so sweet. I'm so happy that we're finally at that point where Apollo's not just like, my hate you, my evil tiny servant. And now he's like actually like understanding. Uh -huh. Oh my God. Okay, I finished the book. I finally finished the fourth book. I was sort of kind of almost on track to um, actually finish it when I said that I was going to finish it. So, what can you do? But I finished it and it's fine. Everything was okay. So um, that's all that mattered. I liked how the ending all came together. I thought that it was a very heartfelt moment before everything was going to go to crap again in the fifth book. But anyway, I came on here just to say that I finished the book, was really happy with everything and was glad that what I thought was going to happen did not actually happen. I told my sister this earlier, but when something really bad happens in a book and you're like devastated by it, right? I, for some reason, have been trained because I've been reading so many books over my, the course of my life. I have been trained to like be in denial the entire time until the end of the book when I know for sure that that person or that thing or that event or whatever the case may be actually stays the way that it happened. So um, I was in a bit of denial when the thing that happened in the book happened and I'm glad that everything worked itself out if you know what I mean. But yeah, anyway. Anyway, don't wanna make this too long. This vlog is already going to be literally 45 minutes. Hope you guys are okay with that. I'll start the fifth book and when I do, I will update you guys though. I don't know when that will be. Hopefully tomorrow, cross your fingers. And uh, yeah, let's do this thing. Okay, I'm pretty sure I was in the same spot the last time that I filmed a clip for this vlog. So ignore that. But I just started the Tower of Nero. Okay, I didn't just start it. I started it earlier this morning. I'm on page 106 right now. The only things that I really wanna say about this story so far is that one, I'm reading it extremely slowly for some reason. And it's very odd. Like I've been at this all day and I'm only on page 100. I guess I just wanna like read every line and like soak up all of it because like this is the last Percy Jackson book like what on top of that there are like so many underlying plans that different people have going on I'm trying to pay attention to as many as I can something's happening with Nico but speaking of Nico I do just want to say one thing if anything happens to my precious Nico and will I will hurt someone. Okay, that was it. <laughs> I'm honestly pretty scared for what's gonna happen because they keep saying that Nero is ready to literally blow up New York. And um, I don't doubt that he would, just like none of the characters doubt that he will. Also this thing with Nico is just really driving me crazy. I just wanna know what it is. I just wanna know, like all the bad news supposedly that he's gotten, like what does that mean? Oh my God, there was this whole paragraph of stuff that Nico went through from Percy Jackson to the Heroes of Olympus to now like all of this stuff that he went through and now this I swear to God if something happens to them I will never read another Rick Riordan book again I swear it on the river sticks yeah okay so you know not getting too emotional so far okay so a good amount has happened since the last time that I talked to you guys so I'm here to give you an update I am now about on page 220 something is about to happen that I'm not prepared for so I'm just like trying to pause before then but things that have happened so far so um Nico, Will, Apollo, Meg all on the quest I'm 
I'm so excited. Rachel is back and I love her so much. I love that even though she's human and she has like clear sight and she can see everything, she's just always so willing to help save the world. It's just, uh, I love her. She's one of my faves, like one of my faves. I'm just gonna tell you from here on out, it's probably gonna be pretty spoilery from now on because um, if you haven't read this book, why have you watched this far into the video? I appreciate you, but you're gonna be spoiled. So I'm just warning you. First of all, Nico and Will are freaking adorable. I love them so much. Nico made these friends with these cave runners called troglodytes. Apparently they're like these myths even to gods, like Apollo didn't even believe that they existed, but apparently they do and they like, they they live, they were so funny, they live like deep under the ground, like as low as you can go under the ground, that's where they live. They call the, the world above the crusty crust, it was so cute. They wear like a bunch of hats and the only things that they value in life are headwear, reptiles, lizards, like because they like to eat lizards, and soup. Those are the only things that they value in life. But that part was so cute, the troglodytes, I love. I love them. I love them so much. What I also love is that Will can glow in the dark, which I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that we knew that from another book. It just seems really familiar to me. I love that Apollo keeps saying like, my boy or like my son and that is just, ugh. So the part that I'm at now, they've just surrendered themselves to Nero and Nero discovered their plan and whatnot. He had his eight year old adoptive son cut off a person's hands. Can we not? You know, we're halfway through the book and like, all is lost. <laughs> like we're already at the lowest point of the book. <laughs> and it's only the middle of the book. <sighs> Crossing my fingers that everything turns out okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, it's well past since the time I should have gone to sleep, but I just want to say that this fight scene that has been happening in Nero's tower in New York has been giving me such anxiety over the past hour that I've been reading it. Oh my god. I am like constantly petrified that one of my favorites is going to die. Like right now I'm petrified that Nico is going to die, but then I keep thinking like, no, no, he can't do that to us. Like, like he knew that Jason wasn't anybody's favorite character, but Nico, if he tried to kill Nico, People would riot. I'm just gonna continue to cross my fingers and hope that, that none of that will happen. I'm really, really glad though that Meg was able to stand up against Nero and was able to be like, no, you have been manipulating us this entire time and I won't let you do it anymore. I really, really liked that. That was just, that was the part that I was waiting for these whole five books. I've just been waiting for her to stand up to Nero. Oh my God, you guys, I am freaking out right now about what I just read. So for context, I'm at the part where they just defeated Nero. Um, Nero is dead and Apollo now has to go fight Python. So he's saying goodbye to everybody. He doesn't know if he's gonna come back and he passes by Chiron. Like they have a conversation and so Apollo is like, and did your uh, joint task force meeting go well? And I didn't think anything of what he was having a meeting about, right? The last time that we heard about it. And Chiron goes, a severed head and a cat, two different uh, people, acquaintances of mine from other pantheons. And so my brain is like, wait a second, wait a hot second. Okay, the cat has to be Bast, right? From the Kane Chronicles. If you haven't read that series, it, she, it has to be Bast. She's the goddess of cats. The severed head, I had to Google because I knew that it had to come from Magnus Chase because I was like, I can't remember anything about that series. And Mimir, he's basically just a severed head. It's, what the heck is happening? Oh my God. And it's really funny because we kept getting snippets in these books about other gods from other pantheons and other belief systems. We keep getting like random Egyptian slash Persian mythology mixing with Greek mythology in these stories. So something is happening, like something is happening. And now that Chiron is like, oh yeah, I had a meeting with a severed head and a cat from different pantheons and you know who they are. And it's just like, what is actually happening right now? Like if this is the final per book in the Percy Jackson series, you can't just like say this to us and then leave us hanging like this. Like, what does this mean? If this has something to do with Chiron and the Greek gods, then like, how is this the last book? Like, you can't just like say this and then not wrap it up. My brain is not even focused on what's gonna happen at the end of this book. I'm literally just like wondering what the heck 
What? What? Guys, I'm tearing up because I just finished the Tower of Nero and everything in me is so emotional right now. Oh my god. <sighs> so first off, I want to say that I absolutely loved this story. I loved the last book. I'm so happy that I finally decided to finish the whole series. Oh my god. The last one was definitely my favorite. Out of all of them, it probably would go The Tower of Nero, The Burning Maze, The Hidden Oracle, The Tyrant's Tomb, The Dark Prophecy. So it would go, what, five, three, one, four, two? is like my, my order of preference, I guess. I can't put into words how much I loved it. First of all, Apollo. Having to go fight his worst enemy as just a, a human mortal being. Not only that, but basically like being okay with the fact that he would die in order to be able to bring him down and bring peace to the world again and like make sure everything was okay. Like I know that he said that like multiple times in the story since like book number three, he's like offered to sacrifice himself multiple times, but like there was something about him like hanging off the edge of chaos, like fighting off Python and realizing that like he has the power to let go and he has the power to give in to chaos and like let himself be no more and he was willing to do that right then and there and that is what got him to crawl out of the the cavern or whatever and become a god again and that just like literally broke me in pieces. I could I. I can't, I can't deal. Meg and the way that she stood up to Nero and she helped her siblings who like, I didn't even know existed until this book. I don't think that there was any mention of the siblings until this book, but the way that she stood up to him helped her siblings and started a new chapter in her life. I, I was just so happy about that. I was, I was so worried about this book because the whole series she's been like gaining her independence and realizing what a manipulative bitch Nero was the whole time, her whole entire life. And I was so worried that this book she would, you know, something horrible would happen because of that. And it didn't. And it was wonderful and I loved it. I really liked how that scene after Apollo became a god again. He was in the like Olympian throne room with all of the other gods and the gods were like, you know, acting their usual like jovial joking, like, oh, you want to go smite some mortals kind of thing. And he was just like, he felt like an imposter. Like he said, like, you know, imposter syndrome where it's like, I don't belong here. Like, I don't, I don't belong in this place with these people. There was just something about that that just like really like drew on my heartstrings. It just, it, uh, I need to stop talking about this or I'm gonna start crying. So the way that the entire story wrapped up was just so wonderful to me. Like I have no words. The way that he visited everybody, uh, just, uh, he visited Camp Half-Blood. He said goodbye to, you know, Will and Nico, his children. But of course he's gonna make it a point to visit because he knows what it's like to be a human and he feels at home in Camp Half-Blood now more so than he does on Olympus. Like what? Oh my God, I love it. I love it so much. He went to the way station and said goodbye to um, Emmy and Joe and Leo and the fact that Reina and Leo are like, you know, brother and sister and they're like, you know, Leo is having Emmy and Joe be like his foster parents and he's teaching at risk kids or whatever he's teaching them mechanics and stuff it's just oh i literally i cannot think of a better freaking ending for all of this oh my god and we go to camp jupiter and we hear how hazel and frank are like you know vamping up the camp that um lavinia is like doing her thing with the tap dancing in the fifth cohort it's so great and then we meet up with percy and annabeth who just survived their road trip of death apparently and now they're gonna start college and it was just uh, Ah, uh, so cute. And then of course, the reunion with Meg was just everything. It was, it was everything. Oh my God. I just, I literally want to cry. I do want to point out as like a last sort of thing that there were a couple of loose ends that were not tied up in this series. So I'm probably going to do some like Googling soon about what the heck is happening with Rick Riordan in the future. From everything that I've read, this is the final book in like the Percy Jackson series. But at the same time, like I said, there were some loose threads. There were um, Chiron's conversation with Apollo about the meeting that he had with the cat and the head, which I already talked about earlier. And then in addition, there was the prophecy that Rachel gave Nico and Will and like Nico's sort of thing with Tartarus that he has to figure out. So I'm like 
kind of crossing my fingers that we get like a Nico series because Nico is like a fan favorite character. Can you imagine how wonderful that would be if we just got like a Nico and Will series? Like I would literally start crying. But I'm also confused because like I said, I've heard this is the last book in the Percy series and technically if it was about Nico, it would still be a Percy series, I guess, right? I don't know how this works. Yeah, kind of confused, but also just like filled with overwhelming joy. <laughs> yeah, I think that is everything. <laughs> I, I've read five books on this vlog. This vlog is going to be insanely long, so I apologize. Um, even though this is not ahead of time, I, I apologize now that you're at the end of it that you had to watch that much to get to this point but i'm just really happy that i ended up reading as much as i did and of course if i didn't mention something that i clearly should have mentioned that's totally my bad and you can bring it up to me in the comments and i will be more than happy to talk about it if you finished them all and you have a favorite part that you really loved or you want to talk about leave it in the comments down below so we can talk about it together because it's just such a good book oh my god so i think that is actually going to be everything for this video you guys uh if you want to follow me on any of my my socials all of my handles are in the description below thank you so much for watching this probably long ass video and i will catch you later bye